baldness. That's one. That's one. Yeah. It was that. It was that rugby. Was it rugby yeah. players? South that Africa. Had... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was going bald way before I started taking creatine. So a lot of people say, oh, well, obviously. Um, and it's interesting. It was a, a great study in a sense that they looked at a novel concept. So they had uh, elite rugby players do a crossover design. And a crossover design is really powerful. That means the group gets both placebo and creatine. So it really controls for diet, genetics, hormones, things like that. And when they took 20 grams a day, um, it might have been even 25 grams a day for seven days. Uh, during the creatine supplementation phase, they increase the hormone uh, dihydroxy testosterone or DHT. And most people say, oh, I think I've seen commercials about this. It's a surrogate of testosterone, but it's been highly linked to hair follicle loss and thinning from a cellular perspective. They measured it in the blood. So the correlation, uh, you know, it's, it's just a, a surrogate. But when they went up, I think it went up by about 57%. But it was still within the physiological range. And what I mean by that is when you go to your doctor and they measure your blood glucose and it comes back and the doctor says, no, it's within the normal range. Cholesterol's in the normal range. Even increasing by 57%, I think that was the number. Uh, it was still within the normal range. When they were on placebo, it increased by about 40%. So everybody says, whoa, hormone went up. Correlation, causation, everybody was freaking out that this hormone went up. They did not measure hair follicle loss, thinning cross-sectional area, no dermatologist was involved. But a lot of people have run with this. And to this day, they cite this single study um, that even didn't look at free testosterone. There was no increase. So just because DHT went up a little bit and they started lower, so there was more room to improve, people think it causes baldness. I've assessed easily over a thousand people, males and females, not a single person has said, hey, whatever you're giving to me, Blonde, double blind is causing my hair to fall out. And I, I got to believe a participant would say, I'm not taking this anymore. My hair's uh, falling out. Um, and I do know, I can't talk about it because I'm not sure, but I do know that there's been a paper submitted that have looked directly at hair follicle loss and thinning with creatine supplementation. And I, that was going to be my next question. Yep. I mean, has well, first of all, has anyone replicated this study? It sounds like no. No. Um, and has second, has anyone, you know, directly looked at hair follicle? It's in it's in review right now. Um, but if I had to have a magical guess, it doesn't affect hair follicle loss or thinning. So if people are watching me, they're like, oh, and then they look at other creatine researchers. I can blame my parents and primarily my mother for that, for the maternal DNA. Um, but then there's other people with full heads of hair. So it can't be a cure. It's like carbohydrates cause obesity that's nonsensical it's it's everybody's different um but i still get this on a daily basis both from males and females they don't want to take it or their hair is thinning and um i'm really glad that this study is coming out because the way we should have answered this is we don't know until a study emphatically says no we didn't see any of the effects um we would have to say we don't have any evidence to suggest it does and we don't have any evidence to suggest it doesn't and even when the study gets published we'll probably have to do multiple but um, and just has never been done. And no which, rodent studies? Went? No rodent studies, nothing. I you, think it's an area that people said no one cared about. And then all of a sudden, everybody cared about it. Yeah. That's so is there is there any other uh, really, I think, prevalent misconceptions or myths that you want to talk oh, about? Or geez, know about? There's so many. I think the, the big one um, that uh, the big one we're getting a lot is does it increase hypertension or blood pressure? Because if it increases water into the body, could that have any effects? And we're not seeing any adverse effects there. Um, the other one is we do not see any evidence it disrupts sleep. Although we talked about the, the study earlier, it doesn't have any negative effects there. Um, and then cancer. So this is an area that is difficult to answer or talk about um, because we just don't have a lot of human cellular data. From the in vitro data, um, we're not seeing any in humans, at least from recommended dosages, any uh, malignant growth or any uh, cancer promotion. If anything, we're seeing anti-cancer properties uh, from improving or anti-inflammatory uh, responses there. And in our latest paper, The Myths and Misconceptions Part 2, uh, one of the world's best uh, creatine researchers and medical doctor, Mark Tarnopolsky, read a really good section on that. Um, so if anybody's interested, read that. And, and it seems to have some potential for cancer rehabilitation when you're looking at uh, tissue loss, caxia seems to have some beneficial effects there. And um, I'm collaborating with Kieran uh, uh, Fairman in uh, University of South Carolina looking at uh, prostate and breast cancer rehabilitation. So I think you're going to start to see some medical applications growing more than just young, healthy individuals. Uh, again, the common denominators, all these um, are sort of asking something for help. It's either rehabilitation or prevention. And that's where I think creatine is really 
uh, changed. It used to be for just young individuals who are healthy, and now it seems to have some of these health aspects. So very exciting times to be talking about it. Yeah. yeah. Are, are you familiar with any of the research of uh, Dr. Carrie Cournier? Out of University of Alberta. Yeah. yeah. So cancer there. Uh, I don't think he's ever looked at creatine, but he does no. a lot of community based. Yeah. yeah. I just yeah. had him on the podcast yeah. and he was, you know, he yeah. does a lot of um, exercise, the role of exercise Extra, yeah. in cancer yeah. treatment yeah. and, you know, not just not just aerobic, but resistance training. So um, that would be interesting for you guys to have a discussion. Yes. Yeah. Um, the other thing that came to my mind that I now remember I've I've heard a lot of mm-hmm. people talk about is creatine supplementation increasing their urination, um, uh, particularly during sleep, like, like having to go yeah. urinate yeah. Uh, frequently. I just answered this question on Instagram. So an individual, because I, I said I take a pre-sleep sometimes and all oh, that'll keep me up peeing all night. And I said, oh, actually, that's interesting. So in this Myths and Misconceptions paper as well, uh, there's a section there that uh, the creatine molecule, whichever, does not increase um, urinary output. People thought since it's creating creatinine, and you need to filter it. We think it's the increase in fluid ingestion that you're probably taking either with exercise or what is usually recommended with creatine. That's actually a myth as well. You don't need to increase tons of water consumption, but the molecule doesn't cause an increase in urination. It's not a, a diuretic or it doesn't increase uh, urinary uh, flow that way. I do hear that a lot. My logical guess is you're probably putting the creatine in eight ounces of water and you're probably drinking more water or exercising. And that's one of the things. But there's no evidence to suggest the molecule itself stimulates urination. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know.